Hey everyone, it's Matt here. How's it going everybody? This is your friend Will. I hope everything's going great with you. If it's not going great, I hope you'll get better. But anyways, let's get started right now. Quick pause right here. Are you a passionate software developer looking to hustle and advance your career in the tech industry? Then you should subscribe to this YouTube channel for all of the latest tips, insights, and advice in the tech industry. Software developer, you have many different directions and paths that you can go. Today, we're going to focus in on becoming a cloud developer as a career path. Now, what does a cloud developer actually do? Well, a cloud developer is responsible for implementing and maintaining cloud infrastructure by design, build, creation, analysis, and maintenance of cloud systems, as well as uh, providing security checks and QA testing. Now, as cloud computing becoming more and more popular and more dominant in the market, there's a bigger demand and a growing demand for cloud developer. And keep in mind, the cloud computing use case in the startup community or the startup circle is completely different than the enterprise circle. If you work in a startup company, you will have to keep in mind of increasing the speed of release and you get to experiment with a lot of the newest and hottest stuff. Like for instance, with, when Firebase came out, if you are enterprise, there's no chance you're gonna be adopting Firebase right away, right? When AWS released EZS Fargate, it took a long time for enterprise to start adopting that. So start, as a startup, you, your problems will be more geared towards creating the product or solutions with the best practice with a new, and you get to experiment with a lot of newer technology. And if you're working in an enterprise environment, chances are you will have to deal with a lot of problems related to scaling. Like for instance, what if a particular infrastructure hits the service quota within their cloud environment? How do you increase the service quota? And how do you do tagging properly? How do you do security scan? and incorporate that within your CI, CD pipeline and things like that. So you see, you're solving different problems but at the end of the day, going in that direction can help you expand your, uh, your capability to get a job at different locations, regardless of whether it's startup or enterprise. So now let's look into how much you can actually make as a cloud developer. Well. At an entry level position, you're probably looking at around 60 to 65,000. But as you make your way up the ranks and become a more senior cloud developer, you can make up to 130,000 plus. Now this number is based on Canadian geographical location. Obviously if you're in the States or elsewhere, this may, number may be different. So. All right, now let's look at some of the requirements that are gonna be needed to become a cloud developer and the steps that you can take. Now, of course, you can't become a cloud developer without the skill set. You're going to need to build your skill set. One great way to do this is using online learning platforms, just like we discussed in our last video, Udemy, Coursera. There's a variety of platforms out there. You could use some YouTube, but you need to build the skill set. You're going to need to learn about databases. You're going to need to build your programming skills, and you're going to need to learn about the pop learn the popular stacks. Right, uh, and then. Once you've acquired the fundamental skill set and have some general knowledge about cloud computing in general, pick one cloud platform, right? And stick with it until you develop some real practical hands-on experience with it. Say if you were to go with AWS, right? Stick with it, you know, experiment with different services that it has, and then you can migrate to other cloud platforms such as Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, because Sometimes certain services are transferable to other platforms. For instance, the concept of creating infrastructure as code, like such as virtual machines, right? On AWS, you have EC2, on Azure, you have Azure Compute Instances, and Google, you have Google Compute Engine. These three things are actually translatable. If you have experience, work, experience working with one thing, you can easily transfer that knowledge and skill set when you experiment with other cloud provider. It also helps to get a certification. Now, there's a number of different certifications you can get from through AWS, GCP, and Azure, for example, AWS. Uh, well, you probably wouldn't want to go for their uh, cloud practitioner one, but you could go for their cloud developer associate, solutions architect certificates, et cetera, et cetera. 
And there are other equivalent certifications for Azure, such as like the DevOps certifications, as well as the architect certifications. Uh, you can take those examinations. Sometimes they even requires you to have hands-on, like actual implementation of, you know, uh, the hands-on experience with it, as well as like Google Cloud Engineer, Google Cloud Architect, et cetera, et cetera. Why is it important to get a certification? Because not only does it show your competency, but it also shows that you're willing to spend your own time to learn and hone your skill craft so that you're able to dominate in that field, right? So it gives your employer more confidence as well. So it is recommended to get some type of certifications if you're serious about becoming a cloud developer. And of course, it also helps to have degrees in CS and computer engineering as well. Right. We're not saying that it is mandatory. Don't get us wrong. Like if you're from other fields and you're interested and passionate and want to become a cloud developer, that's totally fine. You can totally do it. But if you already have a CS or a computer engineering degree, this is going to be a big advantage for you because unlike being say a front-end developer where you only have to understand the programming skill set and the programming language and the paradigm. Being a cloud developer kind of requires you to have some knowledge about the computing theory and understand computing computer systems. So the barrier of entry is slightly higher. And if you came from a CS background, chances are that barrier of entry is really low for you or you already passed that barrier of entry. So if you want to stand out and not having to compete with someone, say, who didn't go to computer science as their undergrad, then this may give you a slightly higher chance at succeeding in this route. Once you have the skill set and certifications and even the degree, it helps to just do personal networking and professional networking. Get out, meet people. You might meet somebody who's looking to hire a cloud developer. Obviously, you want to try and look for events that are focused around that, but you never know. It increases your chances if you're out there meeting people who work in the field. Now, if you're watching this video in 2020, please don't do that. Attend some virtual meetings, okay? And uh, say, if you meet someone who is also passionate about this field and you become friends with a person, you're likely to grow with that person throughout your professional career. These are professional career long lasting friends and that you can rely on and you can learn from. So it's obviously a good idea to do that. And another very big tip to becoming a cloud developer in your journey is subscribing to this YouTube channel. Yeah, there's absolutely no bias here. You know, like it's just our honest opinion and honest advice. So there you have it. Are you looking to become a cloud developer or are you already a cloud developer working in the field? Let us know your story in the comment down below. We look forward to reading your comments and replying. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Peace out.